Hey YouTube, welcome to a new vlog entry. I noticed the channel has reached 22,000 subscribers today and I wanted to make a quick vlog and give you an update on two hobby projects I've been working on in the last couple of months. I had some extra spare time and I thought well let's educate myself on certain topics and um, topics are honeypots and news engine and I will get to that a bit later in this video but first off I want to say hi to the new subscribers um, great that you are subscribing to this channel just people that were subscribed already to this channel you may have noticed that I, I have uploaded a lot of content in the last couple of months and that's due to some copyright restrictions at the moment on the account there's a party that's claiming copyright on their videos and that's their good right uh, this channel is, is, is uh, for educational purposes and not every company sees that uh, in that way and want to monetize their content themselves. Um, but um, the copyright claims are over and I think two or three weeks and I can fully upload anything, any new content again. The first project I want to talk to you about is the Honey project. Uh, I have two honeypots running, an IES honey, web server honeypot and an SSH honeypot. And for people that don't know what a honeypot is, a honeypot is a system that's vulnerable and is connected to the internet and is getting attacked a lot. The main, the main purpose of a honeypot is only to get attacked as much as possible to, their, to the vulnerable system. For example, I have an SSH honeypot running and you can try to connect to the SSH uh, service uh, on the uh, 22 port and you will uh, try to get to, you will ask for a login and if you uh, have a good login you will get a session. The Honeypot is recording all the data so uh, you can see for example which kind of passwords is being tried, usernames etc. But if you get a session and you're logged in you will see also um, the things you, that people were trying to do, for example, to set up a botnet in one of the videos I've uploaded a couple of months ago on the channel. Um, I will make something here, I guess, to you can click on it and we'll, it will take you to the two uh, session replays from the Honeypot, the SCA's Honeypot. First off, I want to show you the Brute Force Lab uh, website on which you can download the Honey, Honey Drive uh, virtual machine. It's the distribution I've been using to set up the different types of honeypots. It has a lot of honeypot software already installed and configured. It's easy to use right out of the box. You can download it and um, install it into your virtual machine software and you can use it right away. A couple of months ago, I've created a blog on which the um, outcome of all the honeypots uh, that are running are being automatically posted. Uh, first off, you can see the Honey H SHH graph overview. It gives an overview of all the uh, data that's collected since the Honeypot is running, the SH Honeypot, and it's been running now for almost half a year. So uh, you can see the top 10 passwords, top 10 username, password combinations, etc. The second thing you can see on the website is the tried uh, connections made or the connection made to the IES web server. Uh, it's interesting to see that there's only a uh, IES web service running and there are a lot of uh, ports that are being tried to connect on so it's interesting to analyze on how many times and on what ports etc. Last thing you can see is the try logins uh, usernames passwords made and the try logins made to the uh, honeypot uh, software to create a setup a session. I've been using uh, Google Fusion tables to visualize the uh, where the IPs are coming from or the, the attacks are coming from uh, it's, it's uh, geolocated by the, the IP, so um, not always is correct, but it gives an overview on, on which type of countries are a lot of attacks are coming from. Second project I want to talk to you about is a news engine I'm trying to build. Uh, I wanted to have more scripting experience, and in screenshots you can see an overview of collected articles. Uh, with the tool called SpringPad. And SpringPad is a, a sort of a web scraper in which you can use to save interesting articles and read them later in an online notebook. Um, the new scripts I'm tr I try to build are used to automatically tag the collected news. For example, you can see the Adobe uh, news article that's related to the Adobe data breach. 
and uh, the tags for it are, for example, Cybercrime Data Breach, Adobe Zero Day, uh, Passwords, etc. When um, I built the uh, tagging uh, system, I thought, well, I can use that also to create an RSS feed uh, related to the subjects that, uh, that's being tagged. And when I created this an RSS feed, I thought, well, let's make a geo RSS feed for it because it's more interesting to see uh, news based on its geo location on which on the subject it's about. So um, I, you can see here um, I have a geo RSS feed that is being updated automatically every hour. Uh, when I add news uh, to it, it's getting updated. And the uh, geolocation is being done based on tagging. Uh, for example, you can see here uh, news related to Google is being tagged uh, and geolocated to the Google uh, headquarters. News related to um, Adobe, for example, is being uh, uh, geolocated to Adobe headquarters and news related to Apple uh, is, for example, being geolocated to the Apple headquarters. Geolocation works based on uh, uh, tagging. So you uh, you have a certain, uh, I've set a certain type of tag, for example, Gmail or Google, that is found uh, in article and it's being counted for uh, the times it's being found. And the most found geotag is being used for the location. Um, but not always you have um, news related to a company but related to a city so i've also uh, um, have definitions now for cities in the geolocation system so uh, new work is being um, geolocated in new jersey or new jersey etc uh, and say related articles is about the topic of the uh, of a company and it's being geolocated to the nsa location um, at the moment, I have about two or three thousand locations between two and three thousand. Most of them are in the Netherlands. Uh, I've been trying to add more cities and more uh, companies to the geolocation system. Um, when a tag is being added, the, the coordinates for that um, uh, geotag is automatically uh, updated by the Google API. So it's been and you only have to enter the, the street or the address or uh, the city and uh, the geolocation is automatically the coordinates for GORs is automatically added to the system. When I built this, uh, I thought, well, it's time to create sort of a front end for it. And that's the, the next thing you are going to see. Um, what you see here is a WordPress theme called Explorable and I'm playing with it in the last couple of weeks to see if it fits the needs that I have and, and the ideas that I have. Um, the idea is that it's, go that it's going to be a sort of a news site on which you can find the, the uh, news related to the tagging or geolocation. Um, and it's a, it's a sort of a direct to website. It's not, it doesn't contain the original article, just the first uh, two sentences, for example. And you can uh, see uh, the original article if you click on read more. You can also uh, click on the tagging uh, and you will see all the news related with, to that tagging um, being uh, added to the map. So, as you can see here, for example, also the Adobe uh, related articles are being plotted to Adobe. Uh, and if you found that article interesting, you can click on more information to see all the tagging. Uh, but you can also uh, uh, re, um, skip through the original uh, article. You can also do a search on the website, for example, a data breach, um, and it will give you all the articles that are being tagged with data breach. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, if you find the article interesting and don't have enough information um, uh, on the uh, first two lines, you can uh, click read more and uh, get to the original article. Also, there's going to be a comment system on it, so uh, it's also interesting to see a rating system if articles are good. So that was the quick update. <laughs> Maybe the video is a bit too long. I hope you found it interesting. 
If you have questions or remarks, just leave them in the comments and I will respond to, to them as soon as I read them. Um, both projects are open source and um, as soon as I finish them, I will put uh, the, the additional scripts I've created for Honeypots or the news engine uh, and definitions for the news engine online. So you can adjust them for your custom needs um, and reuse them. And that's it, so hope you enjoyed it. And if I have another update, I will make another vlog. So bye bye.